Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're going to be discussing the on-chain risk. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So on-chain analysis often gets a bad reputation because a lot of on-chain analysis can often be used to sort of paint a more rosy picture at highs than you know than it really is right because you know it might say well look at all these people flooding in that's a good thing but oftentimes that can mark tops um and so i thought and we've talked about this before you know we have different risk metrics we have the price risk the social risk and the on-chain risk and the on-chain risk is interesting because it includes a lot of different things we're including the mvrb z score the peel multiple the mvrv risk the in the, the minor cap to thermo cap the market cap to thermo cap uh, transaction fees, terminal price risk, the um, the R hodl ratio or R hodl ratio, and there's supply and profit risk. So these two I'm not actually including right now. You can see that those are turned off. But we could include those, but the idea is that you take each metric, you normalize prior prior results between zero and one, prior movements between zero and one, and rather than you know interpreting the rather than interpreting it how we might want to interpret it based on what we think is going to happen. We just interpret it based on, hey, this is historically what has happened, and therefore we're either at a high risk level or a low risk level. And if you were to look at individual risk scores, right? So, like if you were to look at the MVRB Z score risk, that's where it currently is. It is, you know, just below 0.4. If you look at the Peel multiple risk, it's getting pretty high. It's at 0.716. Note that normally once it gets above 0.7, it doesn't stay there for very long, maybe a few months at most. So there's some warning signs there. If you look at the MBRV, MBRV risk, it's getting relatively high. Um, this one is, is the, the minor cap to thermal cap is, is just below 0.4. You can see that in 2019, it went all the way up to 0.5. Um, you have transaction fees risk, which is basically at one. It's really, really high right now. Um, we just put out a video on transaction fees, talking about that the risk on transaction fees is really high, suggesting that you know the market needs to cool off at some point in the next few weeks. You have the market cap to thermal cap risk, which is still relatively low compared to the other ones. And then you have the terminal price risk, which is just below 0.5. Note that in, in um, you know, in 2019 we had a cool off period after it went just above 0.6, and in 2016 we had a cool off period after it just went above 0.5. And then we have the the our hodl ratio risk, which is still relatively low, and the supply and profit risk, which is actually relatively high. Right, it's all the way up here at 0.8 risk. So some of these are getting more elevated than others. Um, but the nice thing is that you can show all of them and combine them into a single one called the total on-chain risk. And when you do that, you get this chart. So the total on-chain risk right now is 0.55. Now, how do you use this? Well, if you like the on-chain stuff, then you can say, all right, well, if it's a low risk level, I'll buy into the market. If it's a high risk level, I'll sell, right? So if it's between, say, 0 to 0.4, maybe you buy. If it's, if it's between 0.4 to 0.6, maybe you don't do anything. And if it's above 0.6, maybe you sell. Or maybe you're more aggressive and maybe you buy all the way up to 0.6 risk and then you start selling at 0.8. Or maybe you're super conservative and you only buy below 0.2 risk, meaning you only buy every few years and then you just sit on your hands for a while, which probably isn't the worst strategy, right? Um, so this is an interesting risk metric to use because whenever it goes to low risk, it's generally a good time to buy. Whenever it goes to high risk, it's generally a good time to sell. The problem is that it doesn't always go to the higher risk band, right? Like here's an example in 2019 where we sort of faded after going up to about 0.6 risk, right? You can see it, it topped out at 0.6 risk, essentially 0.602 risk. Right now it's at 0.55 risk. So it is getting relatively elevated and um, important to keep an eye on it because if it were to go up even higher, um, the, the thing to remember with the on-chain risk is that when it's at a relatively high level, let's say above 0.6, it doesn't tend to stay there for more than a few months, right? So uh, I would I would certainly want to keep an eye on this as as the market continues to to especially the on-chain stuff, you know, has continued to get heated. You know, the price of Bitcoin hasn't moved up uh, as much as some of the risk metrics would have you believe, right? Like the the transaction fee risk has moved up a lot because transaction fees are soaring right now. Um, and you know, it's all the way at at a really high risk level that actually corresponds to prior major tops. But then you look at other risk levels like the MVRBZ score, and it's nowhere near that. And so it's hard to know which one you should wait more. But if you wait them all the same, you get something that looks like this. Now, maybe you're someone that thinks that the transaction fee risk shouldn't be used because of ordinals or something. And you can turn that off 
and see that it reduces the on-chain risk down to about 0.469. Um, perhaps you think it should be considered, but maybe only consider it half as much as all the other ones. So you include a little bit of it. And maybe you want to turn on supply and profit risk all the way up to see where that puts things. So this is a way that you can kind of identify what is the risk in the market. And the great thing about it is that you're not, it doesn't really matter what you think about what it has to do or what you think it has to do or you know, what, you, you know, what you're convinced that it's going to do because of something you read. But it should say, no, you know, there's, there's just a risk level. And it's either at a low risk level or it's at a high risk level. And if it's at a low risk, that means you might want to, you know, based on historical results, no guarantee of future returns. But historically, it's been a good idea to DCA in a low risk. Historically, it's been a good idea to DCA at a high risk. And again, as we said with the other risk metrics that we talked about not too long ago, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that, right? That's my strategy. It always has been. It always will be. At least that's my plan. I DCA into Bitcoin when the risk level is low. When the risk level is high, I take profits and I don't make it any more complicated than that. Of course, we make videos talking about potentially where price action could go in the short term, which <laughs> admittedly is often wrong, but I don't trade any of that stuff, right? I don't. I never have. I, never, I don't really plan on ever doing it. I just trade. When it goes to a high risk level, I take some profits. At low risk level, I, I get into the market. And that's the way I navigate crypto. It's also something that allows me to sleep well at night because rather than constantly predict what I think has to happen and navigating my portfolio based around what I think is going to happen, I just react, right? If the price goes up to higher risk levels, I sell. If it goes lower to lower risk levels, I buy. I react to what happens rather than spend a lot of time thinking about what has to happen because of what suits my bias, okay? That's the way I navigate crypto. That's the way I navigate Bitcoin. We have dozens of risk metric videos on this channel over the last four years that all say basically the same thing um, in terms of how I navigate crypto. Again, this risk metric you can find via the website at intothecryptoverse.com. We are running the sale on it right now. Make sure you guys check that out. Um, you can lock in that rate as long as you do not cancel and get access to the on-chain risk. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.